Hello, hello. Hey, can you hear me? Yo, I can hear you, man. Can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> perfect. All right, great. Yo, how you doing, dude? Well, again, for being accommodating, and uh, sorry about all the uh, mix-ups here. Oh, no, dude, it's it's happening. We're all good. Everything's going, so I hope it, you know, Neither I hope neither one of us have a time constraint too much, <laughs> but we're all good, dude. Excellent, excellent. Um, so this is going to be a, a VOD? Is this... Yeah, uh, I'll be oh, uploading switch. this to YouTube uh, after this is over, and then uh, I'll send you the VOD through Discord, so you can you know easily go back and watch it whenever you want. Oh, that'll be great. So I won't have to take notes or anything. Um, all right, cool. Um, um, yeah, first things first. Uh, thanks, thanks. I don't know. Like I don't. Uh, thanks are, for are you talking the, uh, right now? I don't know if your mic is turning off when you're talking as well. By the way. Oh shoot. Okay. Um, you still there? Oh, sorry. Okay, actually, that was my headset. My bad. <laughs> I'm like, I, I, uh, yeah, I don't hear anything you're saying, but my headset actually oh, turned God. off. Okay, it's my bad. Um, all right. Okay, good, good. All right, so I, I, go ahead and give me a quick rundown of, like, give me, like, your league. Give me, like, your, your preferred, like, matchup we want to go over here and, and, like, your common problem. And then uh, I'll send you my info while you're telling me so we can add each other on Battle.net and get it going. Yeah, sounds good. So um, I, I hope this doesn't mess with your uh, streaming plans or anything. But um, I, I mean, I, I have a replay that we could look at. But uh, to be honest, I don't really have any replays that I would that I'm proud of that I'd stand behind where the mistakes aren't like super obvious. Sure. I'm, um, I've been kind of working my way up. Um, I guess I'm I'm in like high platinum. If I this is Terran, unfortunately, sorry about that. Sure. I'm doing mech. Um, and that seems like pretty straightforward. I can kind of like see the path ahead. Um, but I, as soon as I started trying to play bio, it was like, like, like when you transition into your diamond stuff and it's like, okay, we're going to play a bio game. Like for me, that was like catastrophic. And like, sure. I, I went back down to, to gold. So I'm kind of like working my way back up with, um, bio slowly, but I've got like a, a ton of questions about that. Sure. And, um, I guess in general, um, like there's so much good information on the grunts to GM, but I guess I'll be hoping to do like um, get information that kind of like complements okay. that stuff. Okay. So um, I guess first order of business for for me, if it's okay with you, is uh, I I just want to make sure I'm not running into some kind of brick wall um, as far as my uh, like the the. But in particular, like the fingering for the hotkeys and, and stuff, right? So, like, again, the transition to bio with mech, it like, uh, like your APM can be really low and it's like kind of easy. And if, if it's low, it doesn't matter and whatever. But with bio, it's like you, I'm just getting punished for having a low APM. So, um, okay. Well, it's, I feel like the, uh, so I, I sent you my info. So while I, while I tell you some stuff, you can go ahead and throw me an ad and then I'll, let me get into a, into the replay for you. Cause, uh, uh, anyways, I'll, um, what I would say about bio is I know it's going to be really, really annoying or really uh, different. Frustrating would be good words to use here to become a bio player after you've been so used to mech for so long. But the the thing about bio is bio is, a is one of the few styles inside StarCraft 2 that has this thing where you... you are not going to necessarily be able to be good at bio by simply just doing a build order. And then suddenly it's like, oh, bio's great. Bio's 100% like execution based, like really heavily execution based. And if you don't have tons and tons of experience behind you, it's not going to feel good at all. It's going to feel like it's going to feel pretty terrible because that, that composition is based off 100% off of how good at multitasking you are and how good at micro you are during the fights while also maintaining your macro. So if you, at the very least, if you have like good macro foundations to work with, where it's not like you're just totally fucking neglecting everything, uh, because you learned how to macro with like mech, it'll definitely help you like get more adjusted to bio faster, uh, being able to play bio properly. But yeah, bio is, is a game where you can l win one game and you can lose one game and you could look at both and be like, I don't know what the hell happened. Like, why did I win or why did I lose this? And it might seriously be something as simple as... Your build could have been exactly the same both games, but one game you did a drop that combined with your main attack, and one game you just did a main attack. The game where you did a drop, you you won, and you were like, "Wait, okay, cool. That that 
that was great. I but I, I won and I, you, you you don't even think about it. But the next game you do it again. But you just do a main attack because you're like my main attack won last game around this time. I'll do it again and you get fucking destroyed and you're like, wait, was my macro off? Was this off? Was that off? And in reality, it's it, bio is just like the more you can pull your opponent around the map and spread them out, the more you can overpower certain locations and it takes a lot more. Like it has way higher skill sets basically than mech for like for learning purposes because you actually have to like manipulate the map to your advantage. And that's not something that people in fucking gold and silver and bronze and stuff are really going to be used to doing. Uh, so it's okay that you're struggling with bio. That's kind of expected. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll jump into a lot of stuff. We'll uh, we'll figure out what's going on with your with your specific games and uh, see what's going there. Did you just? I have a ton of friend invites. Did you by chance add me on uh, US West or on uh, North America Battle.net so far? No. Okay. Uh, are you are you on Battle.net right now? I can be like yeah in the game yeah 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 yes yeah all right so just log into uh because this is the only way I can watch the replay with you uh, okay log into North America and then okay. um uh just let me let me know when you're on and then we'll uh and then I'll give you the next step it's it's super simple. Um, okay, this is this is Beanet or Starcraft yeah, within. It's the same thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just log into like just do your Battle.net launcher and then log into North American server on your account. Uh, what okay, I'm in. Okay, and then uh, just go ahead and hit um, on the open up your friends list in the bottom once you're on, and then add friend, and once uh, then just copy paste my my name and code and that I put in Discord for you. Okay, just a moment. Sure, sure. No worries. But yeah, I. Uh, so you said you were plat. I would say you, uh, by all means, you can ask me questions about bio if you'd like. But I still would recommend you focus a little bit on mech for now, because if you're if you're struggling in plat at all, like if you're not just cruising through plat all the way to diamond, you're still probably having macro problems. Yeah, for sure. Um. There we go. And what? Okay, just what? What's your actual name in StarCraft? Just because I, I have like twenty-five pending invites right now. Yeah, sorry. It is uh, Perdition. Okay, got you, bro. I got you, bro. Uh, all right. So I will make a party with you. And okay. So the way this works now is go ahead and accept that, and I'm gonna make you leader. Now, in the top middle of the, of the interface, hit replays, and then uh, scroll down to or whatever replay you wanted to look at. Basically, just pick it and then hit the option on the bottom that says "Watch with Others." Yeah, sounds good. Sorry. Um, the, 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 you know what? Don't even fucking worry about it, Turd Storm. Okay. I was like, do you want me to call you Turd Storm? <laughs> Bring it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, you're all good, dude. And then uh, once you do that, uh, don't start the game right away. Just just hit watch with others first, and then I'll tell you what to do finally after we get to that next part. Oh, man. Some of the re replays I was expecting to be here aren't, which is uh, a problem. Um, here's one. Okay. Now, right-click my name, and then hit promote to lobby host. And perfect. All right. It's and honestly, as long as they're like recent games of yours that like represent like your average play, it's it it's gonna be more than enough. There's gonna be so many things we're gonna be able to talk about. Yeah. Again, I'd be super interested in focusing on, like, I mean, this is a question that I can't get anyone to to answer because it's so stupid. But okay. the, like for just. What fingers are you using to press one and a? Like, like if you want to stutter step Marines, because okay. like if I'm trying to use my pinky to to hit both one and a, it's it's like impossible. So the way I so like, the, I can I can give you a layout of like a mental layout of how I play and uh, with my hand and on the keyboard. That would be so. I I rest my fingers. Uh, every single game that I play, I usually rest my fingers where it's ring finger. Uh, and I'm I'm right handed by the way, so my right hand is on the mouse, my left hand is on the keyboard. But my okay. ring finger is on two, my 
middle finger is on three and my index finger is on four. My thumb kind of wrote like just glides around like the FG area and my pinky kind of rests around like the caps lock shift area. And that's just how it by default I start every game because I start, I just kind of roll my fingers around two, three, four a lot. That's just how I, how I personally have like a uh, rhythm with my hand. And then whenever I do things like I hit Q, A, Z, it's all done with my, or, or one or tilde. Uh, that's all done with my ring finger. If I hit tab, oh or if I hit, uh, well, if I hit tab, that's also probably done with my ring finger. If I hit shift control, that is done with my pinky. So every time I'm shifting in, controlling in, that is pinky. Uh, two, three, four is any of my, either my middle or my index finger. Like both of these fingers, it depends on whatever I'm doing, but I will use my middle or my index finger to hit two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, zero, whatever. Like if I'm making control group or something, uh, if I, Use any hotkeys like Q is ring again. Q Q A Z is ring. W S X is most likely going to be my middle finger. E D C R F V T G B is all probably my index. So my index is dominant. So it has the most buttons I'm going to be pressing on it. And then if I ever hit spacebar, that is always my thumb. And I do sometimes hit spacebar in StarCraft to redirect my camera because I rebound in my hotkeys. I rebound a base camera instead of just being backspace. It is also bound to spacebar. And that's kind of how I how I do it with my hand. When you when you press one A, are you doing you're you're doing both of those with your ring finger, like one A one A with the same finger? Uh, actually, if I do one A, that is probably my middle finger. Like, because if because if if I'm, if I'm actually like, here's the thing: if I'm doing uh commands like macroing and stuff, and I'm bouncing around my base, like hitting like make this unit, make that unit, make this unit. Maybe my hockey's R, maybe my hockey's. Uh, T, maybe my hockey's B, maybe I'm rolling around with camera hockey's, which is QWE for me. Uh, I'll use my ring, but if I'm actually, for, for for 1A in that regard, if it's like mixed in with macro, but if I'm doing a 1A, 2A, 3A, 4A, and I'm microing like four control groups or something like that, I actually use my middle finger. Now, that I'm doing this from like muscle memory. Like, because I'm trying to like do it in my mind, like as if I'm playing it. And yeah, if, I, if I'm doing multiple control groups really fast, it'll be my ring finger actually, or my uh, my middle finger. But if I'm just macroing, it'll probably be my ring finger because my middle finger is actually hitting hotkeys like W or S. Does that make sense? So my, my actually, my middle and my, my my index finger are both dominant. I use them most often, but if I have to use my ring, I will use my ring finger to hit other keys because my dominant fingers are actually pushing other keys that are also important. Okay, yeah. Yeah, because it seems like 1A is something that everyone has to do all the time, all day, every day. And like for it, for not, for there not to be a finger split, it just feels so strange to me. Yeah. So it, and B is your, uh, like, so if you're building the depot, you're, you're doing BS. Yeah. And yep. And that would be, that's actually the way I can already tell you how I'd line that up in my hand. That would be my index finger would be on B and my ring finger would be on S. So I wouldn't be doing it with my middle and my, and my index because it's, it's awkward as fuck. And because here's the thing here, let me, let me give you a, let me give you a, uh, this is actually a tip that I will say right now that it makes a big difference at not looking at the keyboard. And again, I, I've never explained this to somebody, so I've never like, <laughs> like it's, it's, it's kind of interesting, but what I actually do is I tuck my pinky between my caps lock and my a key often, like it rests in between it. And what it does is it gives me a general, like, also I rest my thumb around space bar, uh, on the keyboard often too, which gives me like a mental image of how the keyboard is in a way. And like, it, like it sets my hand in place basically. And, uh, sometimes if I move my hand back up to the keyboard, I will, I will glide my finger above like four or five and I'll bump it into the F keys, which will once again, give my, like, I don't have to look at the keyboard. I just know exactly where my hand is. And, uh, I, I will use like for BS. I will be using uh, index B ring or uh, yeah ring finger S, and while my thumb again is like kind of resting between like caps lock and A, and once I do it, I will redirect my hand to like my two three four spot, and we're good. Because two three four is my is my center point for my keyboard whenever I use it. Like I know exactly where everything is by muscle memory from two three four. You're not reaching for the the F keys too often. I do not use F keys. I, I rebound F keys to uh, different things. Like if we're if you okay. if you use like camera hotkeys, I rebound my 
so I, I bind camera hotkeys with F keys because that's when nothing's going on. Like that's you can set a camera hotkeys when they're like twenty seconds of the game. But once I bind them, I don't actually hit F keys to go back to my camera hotkeys ever. Like it, my, to actually use my camera hotkeys, it's like Q W E and then the side mouse buttons. That's for Terran as well. The that's for all. It, are... Yep, that's for all races. And live, okay. Okay, yeah, that's helpful. I, yeah, because I've got a lot of bad muscle memory at this point because of uh, that's like from ages ago. Sure. Um. Okay, yeah, that's super helpful. Yeah, I mean, like that that video that you did with the uh, the hot keys for Zerg, and maybe you did Protoss too as well. Uh, it was like super, super, super helpful. Yeah, and, uh, I might actually make I, one I for just, Terran. Oh, <laughs> I never made one. Oh I, my God. I, I, I didn't know how I wanted to make one because I'm just I'm not as good with Terran. There are a lot of people who would be grateful. I, I'm sure. Yeah. Um, I'll I'll consider it me. for sure. Yeah. Whatever. Um. <laughs> anyway. Um. Project. Yeah. So we can take a look at the replay sure. if you want. Yeah. Yeah. Let's um, do it. And again, if and during the coaching lesson, feel free. Don't don't be uh, don't be shy. If there's anything on your mind, even if it's not even related to what I'm talking about, and I'm in the middle of saying something and you interrupt me, by all means, you can do that. I, I'm not going to get mad at you. I'm not going to it's not going to uh, bother me at all. Uh, feel free to ask whatever's on your mind. So like the fact that you just asked me about the keyboard stuff is awesome because I you know I've I've actually never had someone ask me that before, and I I imagine that's something that's going to probably help you a lot. So yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Totally. Um. Yeah, so I've actually got a list. Can I ask you? Um, so if, if you're just if you're facing off against a Protoss with Bio, oh my God, that's so loud. Hold on. <laughs> sure. Uh, and also, if you want, if you would prefer, it, it's up to you. If you would prefer, we just talk about a lot of your questions you have. We can totally do that instead of like going over the replay. If you don't actually want to go over the replay, but if you want to go over the replay too, we can. I, I can go over this on like on the side while we ask questions and stuff, and I can give you some tips. Yeah, I mean, like talking would be my preference. Sure, I guess. go for it. But, um, so if, if you're facing off against a toss and it's just like kind of a sty standard uh, bio composition against some kind of standard toss composition, like, you know, Stalkers, Immortals, and a, like what kind of, um, I'm assuming, what kind of supply deficit can the toss go into the battle with and still expect to to win i'm assuming that if, if supply is equal that the that the turn gets run over you said he was going stalker zealot yeah like stalker zealot or stalker immortal and, and, or you know yeah, just yeah. some kind of like basic and you're, composition. you're going mech here in this in this situation no bio uh, so like, okay. I'm, I'm doing like marine marauder okay. and medevac uh so the thing about marine marauder medevac against stalker and or like just gateway compositions is you have to analyze does the gateway comp have AOE or not? And AOE is just area of effect. Like, does he have Psionic Storm? Does he have Colossus? Does he have, uh, or Colossi? Does he have Disruptors? Anything that can actually, like, kill multiple of your units at the same time? If the answer is no, if he has, like, equal supply to you, you're going to fucking destroy him. Uh, you're going to, if you just stim pack and kite the Zealots and then stutter step into the, uh, the, the range units when the Zealots are dead, you are going to destroy yeah. him. If he does have area of effect, uh, you're going to need more supply than him, ideally, because you're probably going to, unless you micro like a god and you dodge the AoE or, or like mitigate the AoE as much as you can, uh, the way that would kind of work is uh, if you were going up against Storm or Disruptors, it's literally as simple as get out of the AoE when it happens, uh, like pre-dodge a Storm or don't get hit by a Disruptor. If it's a Colossus, the best way to micro against Colossus is like you have one or two Marauders walk forward in front of your marines as the colossus is shooting and the colossus is currently aggroed onto the marauder and then it, it does not swipe your marines at the same time or other units it's literally like swiping the line is swiping one marauder at a time because you moved it forward and you you moved you saw what marauder, what unit was being focus fired by the colossus and you moved it so if you can if you can do things like that like that that is advanced micro obviously uh but that will mean that you could once again beat uh standard Protoss army with about equal supply. But in general, the the way it kind of works is it becomes more and more impossible to micro perfectly the bigger the armies get because suddenly you're not dealing with like one Disruptor or one High Templar or like one Colossus. You're dealing with like four Colossus and also like eight High Templar, which is like, oh, I have to dodge 10 forms of AoE simultaneously the whole time. 
And he could throw all of them down at once if he really wanted to. He could, like, storm me six fucking times and four Colossus are swiping me all at once. And there's not a single person in the world, no matter how good they are at StarCraft, that can micro every single unit perfectly in that situation. So what's going to happen then is the way you're going to win fights is you're going to uh, ideally have more supply than Protoss. You're going to, like, so if Protoss is at 130, you're going to be at, like, 150. You're going to have a bit of, you're just going to be able to overwhelm with, like, a larger amount, which is going to allow you to do things like have a bigger concave. Or you're going to play Bio in a way in this situation. If, like, let's say you're both maxed out and you have no choice but to have the same supply, you're going to try and miti uh, you're going to try and mitigate the AOE by spreading his army out more. Like, you're going to drop his third base. You're going to drop his fourth base. You're going to push when he when he comes over to defend his third. You're going to shove into his second base with your main army and scan and see if he's coming. And You're going to literally attack all over the place. That's how Bio kind of goes at that point. Which is why, Bi again, okay. Bio's rough. Go ahead. So... It even if he, what if he doesn't have area of effect? What if he just has immortals yeah, and, and stalkers and zealots? Equal and supply, supply. Equal supply. supply. Yep. Okay. Okay. Um. Oh shoot. Let's see. Oh yeah. Are, are there? Can you point me toward any resources? I I mean the game is so mathematical. It seems like it. It seems like there should be like modeling software for like builds like you can almost do it in a spreadsheet like uh, okay i'm gonna do this build and it's gonna run up it, like i'm gonna do the vibe uh bronze to gm builds for terran and it's gonna go up against the beat it, the the bronze to gm um, the, against toss i'm gonna like, i'm gonna give you a mindset really quick uh, that makes what you're kind of asking for yeah. a bit invalid and this is the, okay. this is the only reason why that is so each scv if optimally mining, mines about one mineral per, or each worker in general, they all, they're all the same. They mine about one mineral per second. And this only applies if your split is two SCVs per patch, because you have 16, you have eight patches and 16 workers in total on your base. But if you have a third worker on a patch that is a close patch, it gets efficiency that's like one third of what it should be. And if you have a patch that is a far patch, so like further away from the command center, if that one has three workers on it, the third SCV gets about a 0.5 efficiency. And not every game will your workers go two per patch, unless you physically make it happen every time. There are some games where your SCVs will be like, you'll have a full full saturated mineral line, and you'll have uh, two patches have one SCV per, and two patches have three SCVs per, and then the other six have two. Or sorry, the other four have uh, have two per patch. And that throws off your income, which throws, can throw off a build order to be perfect every single time. Because it's RNG if... Uh, and if do you know what RNG means? Just, if if no one knows what RNG means, because there's probably someone who doesn't, RNG is like basically you're rolling the dice and just whatever comes up comes up. It's just random number generator. Uh, and not so not every game the AI will be like we're always gonna split perfectly every single game. Like sometimes it just you just get unlucky and you get the three one three one, and sometimes you get really lucky, and without doing anything you get two 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 two, which is perfect. Uh, so that, and again, if let's just say you get unlucky three times in a row and all three of your bases have fucked up saturations, uh, that happens and it will slow down your income. It will slow down, it will slow down your build. It will, it will make the build not always be able to be perfect. So, yeah, no point taken, but like, that just means there are error bars on like whatever sure. value you're looking at. Like you could still like, you can still kind of like get, get an idea of whether like your, your build is running into a brick wall or something. Sure. Right. Like, yeah. uh, I mean, I, Long story short, like, are there websites where, like, people do analysis in that way, or, like... The the best thing you're going to get, honestly, is, uh, like, you're going to get someone who literally can give you a build order, uh, but the I would say the best resource or form of, like, a guide you're going to get is if you just watch a replay. And it doesn't have to be one of your replays. It's going to It could be someone, like, a replay pack. Let's say you look at a Terran, you're like, I fucking love this guy. I like uh, Hero Marine, for instance, and you're like, his his bio build is sick as fuck. It's so, it just it hits these timings, it's so good. What you can do is you can break it down yourself in a way where uh, you just look at it, and then the way, uh, the way I described the, the best way to look at it is, is you break down each minute, and you don't look at like every single piece of the replay where you're like, okay, I gotta look at his exact build time of his depots, and his exact build time of his uh, barracks, and his exact build time of this. Like, you just try to spend your money as soon as you have it every time you, you do that. But you compare one minute by one minute by one minute. So you and you look at things like total supply, and you also look at uh, total worker count. 
So at one minute, how many workers does he have and how much supply does he have? At two minutes, how much supply does he have and how much workers does he have? At three minutes, et cetera, same thing. Four minutes, same thing. And you break it down all the way to like 10 minutes. And you can look at it and go like this. You're like, well, from minute one to three, we're exactly the same. Every single checkpoint, we hit the same exact number. But at minute four, suddenly he's got four more workers than I do. And he also has eight more supply than I do. And then the next minute, minute five, now he's got 14 more workers than I do. And now he has 25 more supply than I do in my game. Like, where am I going wrong in these situations? And then that, that was when you can look at that minute, that, that break it down to that one minute where it's like, what was the deviation? What did he do versus what did I do? And you're like, oh shit, okay. He actually went for a 111 into a third command center. I went, and when 111 into a third CC means he went barracks, factory, starport, third command center. And you might've gone barracks, factory, starport into two more barracks into an engineering bay and then into a command center. And you think you're both going three bases, but you're really not because you're adding so much extra shit into your build. And, uh, that is the best way you're going to be able to break it down, but there's no one that actually has like a site or as, as far as I know, it, 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 like that does these things where it's like, this is the exact breakdown of everything that's happening. And again, the, the, the core value of like philosophy that I kind of teach in bronze GM is trying to find what you're looking for. In my opinion, is kind of a waste of your time as well. Uh, because you're not going to be able to execute a build like, flawlessly to a spreadsheet no matter what you it, it no matter how much you think you can you can't because no, no, I, I i totally agree sure. that this is like this is only because like i i won't be able to like enjoy the luxury of having like coaching all the time and so like you know a month or two from now when i'm just trying to anticipate uh roadblocks ahead so that sure can, and get the answers now um yeah so it's again if if i interrupt it's not because i want to be rude or anything no i don't i, I already but, tell you man you can totally do it it's all good no worries my list of questions and uh, time's ticking away. Um, let's see. Um, question about the the AI and how it engages battles. Like um, that. Like those tips are really awesome in your series. You'll be like, you know, oh, when the when, when the void re, void race sees this, you know, it yeah. uh, behaves this way, and you can manipulate it this other way. And yeah, yeah. like, is that laid out anywhere where um, no. people can just kind of? go and learn about it. No. it there's uh the thing about like here's, here's the thing about that just to explain it really quickly starcraft 2 is a very 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 complex game where if someone made a guide about that uh like for instance if, if i made a guide about that i feel like i wouldn't i would have to take like sit down and think about every situation that would happen and i could probably talk about it for like 20 hours or like 30 hours of this is this this is how this operates and this is how this operates and this, is how this operates like it's it's very complex and there are certain things where certain units even though they react a certain way, it's not supposed to be done this way because a certain situation changes that. Like there are tons of like hypothetical ifs in StarCraft that make this game way more complex than like this game is fucking complicated. <laughs> That's just why no one's ever done that. Cause something like I could tell you again, to, to say this simply, I could tell you something that actually would be correct in a certain situation where I'm like, okay, the void ray is great against hydras because you can a move them because they will auto target the, the hydras this way. And then I could tell you something else where I, it would be incorrect. Where I, what if I was like, the Void Ray will aggro on to the Marines uh, over... It will not hit the Marauders. It'll shoot the Marines instead. But uh, this is incorrect to do it this time because there could be two Widow Mines under the Marines or, or something like that. Where it's like, this is now wrong. And then you're like, wait, what? I, I thought you said A move the Voids and now you don't say A move the Voids. Like it's... There's... There's just a lot of like intricacy to so many different types of things and uh like again if we thought about it for a while we could p bring up many 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 different hypotheticals that could happen about it unfortunately but and, like a general rule of thumb a gen general rule of thumb okay let me i'm just gonna explain a couple uh, philosophies to you that i hope will expand your mind on how you think about the game i'll try to make it quick for you as well uh so you have uh there's one b huge thing in this game called aggro okay oh, this isn't like it's, it's aggression and uh, what it means is if you have like a, a one Marine and you run within range of it, of it to auto attack you, it, you'll aggro it if it's not on hold position, if it's just sitting there and it will start chasing you just because. And then there is another feature in this game called leashing. And what leashing is, is if you aggro a Marine and you let you just stand there and you just sit there, it'll shoot you until you die. But if you run away to a certain point, 
it will chase you up to a certain point and then it will leash back to where it started. So it will stop chasing you and it will go back to where it initially was just sitting there with no commands. Leashing is immediately initiated by the line of sight blocking. So if you run up a ramp, a unit will immediately leash. If a unit is not line of sight blocked, it will leash again by if, if a unit is faster movement speed, it'll make it leash faster. So like if I'm if a if a speedling aggro's a marine and it runs away, as soon as it goes out of line of sight just from physically running away and it line of sights it again because of fog of war, it'll make the marine leash. And finally, if the marine is chasing like another marine where they're both the same speed, and, um, the marine that has no commands and aggro's because it was in range will leash when it gets to a certain like we'll say like it chases it for about like four seconds and it leashes anyways because it's like ah, I'm going for I'm going far away from where I initially started here. I'll leash back. Uh, it, it does leash a lot, but line of sight always forces leash to happen. Uh, there is priorities for units attacking, and for priorities of units attacking, you have things like a melee unit will attack another, will always be able to only attack ground units. Like a Zergling can only attack ground units, obviously. You have ground to ground, air to air, and then the th combos of air to ground and ground to air. But a, a melee unit will always attack a, another ground unit, and melee units will always fo uh, prioritize hostile units before neutral units a scv mining minerals or an scv on hold position an scv on stop command is considered a neutral unit it is not aggressive it is not hostile so if, if you have like four scvs in hold position in front of two marines those zerglings will ignore the scvs and run around the marines and kill the marines they, they will not attack the scvs even if the scvs are blocking them the only thing about what units in this game do though is there is also a stuck feature where if you have let's say you have a like 20 SCVs on the ramp on whole position and you have 10 Marines up on the top of the ramp behind the SCVs and you have like 50 Zerglings running into the ramp trying to attack it. Lings will have a feature where it is it is a stuck issue where you'll have Lings behind Lings. So Lings in the front getting shoved into SCVs that are on whole position. You have Lings behind the Lings in the front that are shoving more Lings into his face and the Lings that get stuck in the front that the, the AI goes, I cannot move anymore and I'm being trapped here. It'll start attacking whatever's around it. it it's like a, it's like a it's like a stuck auto attack feature where I'm not even telling my lings to attack, but suddenly they start smacking the SCVs because the lings get stuck. That is another thing that happens with AI of this game. Um, another thing is, uh, uh, now, so now again, you are, and then you have the priority. Every ground unit works like this. Range unit or like a siege tank it works just like a Zergling 2. It always has priority of hostile ground to ground. Uh, but a siege tank is obviously ranged, so you don't really have the the whole position fucking neutral unit f things in its way anymore. Uh, but every unit, every unit will always focus fire its its hostile priorities. Ground to ground is just ground to ground. It doesn't matter. A tank will shoot a zealot. A tank will shoot a stalker. A tank will shoot a fucking archon. An immortal. It'll shoot whatever's closest to it, and that's it. Uh, and the, in every, every the marauder, same exact thing. They all work the same way. But when you have air to ground to air units. The priority for a ground to air unit is if the unit has a longer range, like a queen or like a Thor, where it shoots further to an air unit than it does to a ground unit, it will always prioritize air units. But if it's in range, because it will shoot further away and it will lock onto those first. Uh, if you have an air uh, a unit that is uh, a universal range, like a marine, a marine will usually prioritize whatever's whatever comes in its range first. So if it's like you're fighting Mutalisk Zergling, and Muta's are behind Zerglings, and Zerglings are just in your face, your Marines will usually kill the Zerglings before they kill the Mutas. And that is just what's going to die. That's just what's going to happen. That's what's going to die. If, if it's like a universal attack, it is no difference. Uh, so and then that, so that's how units work with different ranges. They always prioritize the, the air unit if the area has a bigger range. Otherwise, if it's universally the same thing, they'll attack whatever's closest, whether it be air or ground. And then now you have the final one, which is air units. Air units will always prioritize, uh, like if you have if you have ground and air units that are both hostile. Like let's say you have a uh, a battle cruiser that is fighting against enemy, um, fucking Vikings and Marines, and they're both coming into the battle. They're like both walk commanding, move commanding into the battle cruiser. The battle cruiser will shoot whatever gets closest to it because they're both hostile priorities. They are both hostile priorities, so the BC will shoot either one because it has a universal range. So it works the same as a ground unit with a universal range, of air to ground as well. But if you have an air unit that has uh, a ground attack where it um, it has a superior range, it will again focus fire. Uh, well, there's really that doesn't really exist. Like every 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 air unit that has a ground priority, it has its own 
different like a liberator for instance has its own mode uh the last one that i guess we can say so universal range is universal range is what i'm trying to say for the, for that second last part just to make it not confusing uh it just attacks whatever's close to it but the final thing is air units will always if they're shooting ground units so air shooting ground will always prioritize anything that can shoot back first so if you have five marauders walking in front of 10 marines fighting against banshees the banshees will, will maybe shoot the marauders once if the marauders come in range first and there's no marines currently available but the second the marines walk into the banshee range they will shoot the marines instead by but just by default like we like the, we talked about the hydras and the void rays if, since you saw that uh, the other day it will always shoot something that can shoot yeah. back and that's just how ai works for auto attacking for those kinds of things can i ask a, a specific like yeah. um so bio like say we're in like minute minute six or seven and the toss has like uh, six or seven void rays and you've got some kind of bio composition marines and marauders and and mines um i like i'm i'm learning how the mines just destroy void rays and with the with the mech if you've got a a Thor or two, you can use the Thor to kind of like engage the um, the void rays and then slide in the mines and destroy them, and it's pretty easy. But with the with the bio, like, how what unit do you use to kind of engage the void rays so that you have enough time to slide the mines so, underneath them? So if you are gonna, if you're if you're a fight if I was a Terran player and I was fighting against mass voids with uh which is bio uh, and I was going bio mine medevac, what, what there's two ways you could do it. One way is you could put widow mines in a location where you're going to uh you're, you're like you're like i'm gonna fight the void rays here i'm gonna put widow mines here and i'm gonna poke him with my marines and my you know my bio if he engages your bio and he uh like you know, let's just say he you, you smack him with your bio you back off a little bit and uh you pull try and pull him back to your widow mines he does not follow you that will, you know, you can't really force it to happen. But what you can do is you can zone him with your widow mines and you can make it to where he can't go to certain locations that you want to take advantage of. Because if he's going to run away from you, that gives you the advantage of going wherever you want uh, before, he, you know, if he's going to, if he's going to back off from the ground that you, you engage in, there you go. Like, so if you're, if again, if you're stim packing forward with your Marines, you run forward with your widow mines, you burrow the widow mines, he backs off, you have control of that area. So if you're, let's say you're attacking him aggressively, you can just shove, pick up your widow mines again, shove forward, go kill like his nexus, burrow him again. You force him to take fights at places with widow mines. Otherwise, he takes building losses. If you're doing it defensively, and he's like, let's say he's he shows up at your natural at the edge of the fucking map, and he's like flying yeah. over the cliff, and you're like, okay, this is annoying. You put some widow mines yeah. there to block him out, and then you can leave a couple widow mines there, leave like three widow mines there, and then you can like, and then let's say he backs off, goes to the right, tries to come at your third, you can. Do the exact same thing. Put some widow mines there to yeah. zone him out, so you can like zone him defensively with widow mines. That is another way you could do it. The f okay. The final way you could do it. This is again more micro intensive, but this is how you could force voids to get fucked up. Is you could have let's say like uh, let's say you're fighting like 20 void rays or like 15 void rays, and you step back in like 50 marines with like eight medevacs supporting them, just like a big bio ball with medevacs and then a bunch of voids. And let's say you have like four more medevacs that are in their own control group that all have widow mines inside of them. You could boost these medevacs into the voids. You could have drilling claws on upgrade on the widow mines as well. And you could drop your widow mines into the voids as you boost into them. And then you could burrow the widow mines as they pop out of the medevacs. And if you're dropping them in numerous numbers at the same time, and then you're green boxing, widow, uh, green box burrow, green box burrow, green box burrow on your widow mines, you're guaranteed going to get some of your shots off. Especially if the voids are already engaging the marines. Yeah, now that you say that, I remember you doing that a couple of times in the series, and it yeah, it worked really well. Yeah, um, yeah, okay. And let me let me explain one thing to you too that makes that that will hopefully make this not confusing. Whenever I explain this, everyone gets confused, but I hope it makes sense. If, if you're confused, let me know. If you have a medevac, and you're, you're selected on a medevac, and you tell it to drop on the ground, the medevac will fly to that location, stop, and then go drop, yeah. drop, drop, drop. But if you tell your medevac while it's moving, while you're selected on it, okay, what's up? I got it. Yeah, oh, okay, okay. Press D and click the medevac. Exactly. And, it, it kind of and they drop moves. while it's moving. It like carpet bombs them out. Right. So yeah, a lot of people do not understand that concept, but you need to micro it that way for this to work properly. 
Otherwise, your medivacs will fly in, stop, and then it takes way longer, and the voids might just pop the medivacs immediately. Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um, let's see, 215. Is, is there any guide for... Um, <laughs> I just, like, made my first uh, ghost in a in a bio game against um, a Toss, uh, just to give you an idea of, like, how bad this is. But I'm, <laughs> I'm wondering, in terms of choosing the number of ghosts, um, it... Is there like a rule of thumb that you can use? Like he's got you know X number of Templar. I need X number. Just go, of ghosts just go for like four. Every yeah. uh, don't don't think about it too hard. Literally just go for like four every game. Okay, four. Yeah, because uh, otherwise it's going to be too much supply. Uh, invested into ghost. You don't want because you don't want to. You're not going to use ghost for anything besides EMP. And if you have like four, that gives you the ability to have if you're if you have them all getting a decent amount of energy. Like they all have like 150 plus. You can EMP eight times. Um. Or just, well, just full energy ghosts. You can EMP eight times, and uh, that's plenty of fucking EMPs to work with. Because uh, realistically, all you all you really need is like one or two clutch EMPs, and you're good to go. Okay. So it, if you're using QW, QWE for your hotkeys, does that mess up your... For your camera hotkeys, does that mess up your it E does. and your D for like... Uh -huh. uh, I rebound a lot of keys. So what do you, how did you fix the E and D problem? Like for like sieging Vikings or uh, liberators? Or I whatever? use uh, V and D. VD is, uh, V is usually my siege for all my units and D is my unsiege. I use V exclusively for many things in this game for your abilities. Like I rebound Yamato Cannon to V as well. I rebound, uh, uh, like Widowmine Burrow, I rebound Tank Siege, I rebound Liberator Siege, I rebound, uh, uh, what else? I rebound EMP to V. Um, I'm trying to think what else turn has. I rebound, uh, I think that's it for Terran. Because I didn't change anything on the Raven because I didn't need to. It's, uh, T, C, and, uh, what's the other hotkey for fucking Raven? It's, uh, I can't remember the other hotkey for Raven for some reason. But yeah. Uh, yeah, that's helpful. Yeah. What do you use R for? Uh, for Terran, I don't really use R a whole lot for Terran. Like, I build a Raven with R. Um, honestly, I think that might be it. I don't really use R for Terran. Uh, I use R a lot for Zerg. That's Burrow for Zerg. I use it quite often. Uh, not only Burrow for uh, units, but also Burrow for buildings. But for Terran, uh, yeah, it's... I don't actually use R very much at all. And Reaper, okay. like it's basically just making units like Reaper and, and Wood and Raven. And what do you? This might be in my imagination, but also, it seems also, like a also, lot of sorry. times when you're. Let me tell you one more thing. I actually use R for another thing for Terran. Oh yeah, yeah. It's it's making a planetary fortress because fuck using P. <laughs> yeah, seriously. <laughs> yeah, fuck that thing. So, I I don't know if this is because you're just like really fast or you're actually using rapid fire but it seems like when you're spamming out like pylons or depots it, it almost it looks like rapid fire it looks like you're just like dragging them. i'm uh i'm clicking my mouse uh, when i do that i don't rapid fire when i build buildings okay yeah it's probably impossible too right uh it would it, the only reason why i don't rapid fire when i build buildings is because when you rapid fire with shift it uh it changes the, dyna the dynamic of it and it makes it sl like it, it's still fast it's rapid fire but it makes your hand motions awkward for a second, so it throws off your momentum or your rhythm of what you're doing. Because I would have to then hold, I would have to like move my hand to hold Shift T, and then I would, when I do this, it totally, I lift my hand off the keyboard, more or less. Like my index finger and my pinky are on T and Shift, and then my ring, middle finger, and my thumb are all kind of lifted up, elevated, so it's not like gonna cramp my hand, basically. Like just a, I don't know how to explain it. It's, it, it's just, it. It throws off your, your rhythm of everything, and it um, it it doesn't necessarily need to be done to build a building. What I normally do is I'll click the mouse really fast, and I'll, I might hold shift, but I, I, I'm keeping my hand on the keyboard where I normally have it, and I click the mouse really quickly, but then I immediately go back to hitting my hotkeys of whatever else I'm doing right after I build the buildings really fast. Okay, cool. That's helpful. Um, maybe, would, would you mind addressing this? So, like... The, for me, in most of my games, like, 
either either getting the third or getting denied the third is like the the like critical moment in the game it's like usually if i get my third i, I feel like i'm kind of like in the game and if i lose it's like oh i could have done this sure but like when when i'm watching the bronze to gm like especially in platinum like that that moment where you float your command center into the third and it's like undefeated like i'm just always saying to myself like why isn't protoss running over this base like with it's because it, it, with five and more i can tell you right now this is this is the common problem everybody has everybody has this problem which is why like i'm, I'm not saying that you're saying this but a lot of times when i coach somebody who's like for instance in like gold league they'll be like or like i'll be doing bronze gym series and they'll say exactly what you said where they're like you'd be so dead right now if he did this and i'm like are you sure about that because it might look like if you go for a tank build and I go for a tank build, it looks like the same thing. But if this is why I stress so fucking hard efficiency of how what you're doing, because it you might do you might be lifting your third to take your third base at seven minutes, and you're like, okay, well at seven, you know, because you know, you're not paying attention to the clock at all. You might not even fucking even ever look at it, and you're like, I, I took my third. He took his third, but it's like you take your third at seven minutes, and I'm taking mine at five forty-five. Or I might take mine at 520. And it's if, if your build is more efficient, if you know, if you scout anything that looks inefficient from your opponent and your build is efficient yourself, you can shut down so many different types of aggression that they can do, even if they're doing something where it's like they're aggressive and I'm greedy. But it's inefficient aggression versus efficient greed. So greed still beats aggression then because it's just could just comes down to efficiency. And that's what efficiency is another word for macro. Yeah, no point taken. I, I when, yeah, please please believe me. Like when I ask a question like that, it's not in an adversarial way at, at all, and I totally, uh, I, I totally. No, it's understand. all good. Like it's it's totally fine. I get asked that question a lot though. Yeah. Um, okay, but I, let's see. So if it, there, I mean, it seems like natural that there's like kind of a tension, like there. There are concepts like uh, defender's advantage and like, I mean, when push comes to shove, like I spent four hundred dollars, four hundred minerals on a command center, and if 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 Toss didn't build an extra nexus, you know, he's four hundred minerals uh, ahead, right? There's just a uh, that's just true. So yeah. it there it seemed there. I mean, there is a tension between if someone just stays on two bases and focuses on production they are going to have more supply and more more power only for, against you only for a period of time though third. for a short period of time yeah okay because uh the, the way the way startup works to you that you really got to consider is uh although your your base yes it does cost 400 minerals and each worker costs 50 each worker mines about one mineral per second so your base pays, and also with Terran especially, you have mules that you can dump. You can actually pay your your expansion off within minutes, like one to two minutes. Quite because if you think about it like this too, and um, it's not only just about th th again, this is a, a Terran philosophy or Terran aspect. It's not only just about efficiency of your of your SCVs and efficiency of like mules, which can pay a uh, base off, but it's also heavily about salvaging your existing mineral patches by dumping mules on new bases, which increases uptime of mineral per second. Because if you dump the shit out of mules on your main, when you have a natural, and you dump the shit out of mules on your main, when you have a third base, and you're, you're basically constantly slamming one or two mineral patches in your main base, which removes some of your patches really, really, really fast in the main, and you remove the efficiency of those SCVs, which means you now have an oversaturated main base, and your natural and your third have an, an extended lifespan of let's say like 90 seconds to two minutes because you didn't mine those patches out as fast because you didn't jump dump mules there that is not necessarily good for you because you've just you've your mules can mine over scvs anyways no matter what but you've hicked up your scv uh income because you've oversaturated the shit out of one of your bases that you've already owned for a long time and now let's say he attacks your third uh a minute after or two minutes after you mine out four of your patches in your main because you only jumped mules in your main. And for those last two minutes that just happened, that is four patches with two SCVs per patch that have mined. It's basically, for those four patches, it's two minerals per second because you have two SCVs. Uh, so you would just do two minerals per second for two minutes, which is uh, four, times four SCVs. And that would be like, that's how much minerals you have now lost because of, of mule dedication. Does that make sense? Like it's... 
Yeah. Just uh, maintaining uptime of, of workers as much as you can is great. And uh, again, that's why taking your third is so important because if, you're, if your opponent does attack you when, at, that, at that perfect moment where you're like, I made economy and he made units, you could also say there are things in the game you can do with defender's advantage that can make up the difference. Like, for instance, if you look at the third base in this game right now, where you have the planetary, you have a tank that's sitting next to it. Imagine if that tank was where it is now. <laughs> uh, and then you have the tank on the high ground next to the missile turret. Imagine if that tank was moved yeah. to like the right, where like that pipe is on the high ground. And now suddenly you have a tank in a really good spot. And it's and like, let's say he shows up with a bunch of stalkers and he wipes out the tank next to the planetary in two fucking seconds. But the tank on the high ground gets, instead of the tank on the high ground getting only like three shots off because it would have died right after if it was in low ground. So instead of getting three shots, it gets like seven shots because it's on the high ground, which is much harder to kill and he can't see it properly. He flies an observer over it, fucking dies to a turret or something, which is what you have. And you're like, wow, that tank got so many more shots off because it's, again, it's defender's advantage. You can set up a trap or like a better defense because you, uh, you like, you know, you have terrain to your advantage, basically. And also units that you build pop into the fight right away. Units he build, the units that he builds do not pop into the fight right away unless he has like a warp prism. And he has to travel across the map. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, point taken. Um, can can I ask this? Um, Terran Terran, your your bio and your playing against Mech, I think you had a game like this the other night and, and you you didn't really have time to expound on on what your thinking was, but someone it was like the the guy was going mech, he had a bunch of factories and he was cranking out tanks and you had committed to bio and someone in the chat was asking like like don't you need more tanks and and you're you're trying to explain um no i don't want to get tanks because like i'll never i'll never have as many tanks as he he has yeah um i can elaborate so that, on that. that's not going to be a good idea yeah what's that I, I i can elaborate on that uh so the idea so, oh, go, go ahead go ahead i don't know if that's what you want me to answer no, yeah, that that is. Um, okay. Yeah, so I'm, I'm just wondering if, like, if he's, basically, if, if he's got tanks, I, I guess like the the threat is always that he's gonna push, right? This is and this is this is the this is the idea. Bio, so is it just this is the idea? I, I got I got you. Just uh, hear okay. me out. Uh, so if you are going mech, yeah, you're gonna be having fuck loads of factories. You're gonna be having like five factories. If you're going mech, you're also not gonna be making medevacs. You're gonna be making pure Viking. So you're going to guaranteed have a fuckload of Vikings and a lot of tanks. And mech is also a playstyle that is a slow playstyle that is all based off of zoning. If you go bio and you keep going tanks, you completely devoid your bio style of mobility because you're like, all right, Marine Marauder, let's go. And then you're like, oh, God, okay, tanks. Like you're looking at your fucking watch. Come on, tank tanks. Get the fuck over here. We have a moment where he's out of position where I can take advantage of this. So you're waiting on tanks all the fucking time to get around to your locations where you want to go because bio can, bio can pump like positioning fucking fast. You can stim pack your marines, your marauders. You can boost your medevacs. I, hypothetically, you could put tanks in your medevacs and have them boost around too. But what happens is every single time you siege your tanks, you fortify a location and you're sitting there because you're guarding the tanks. You're reducing your bio count to fortify tank locations. And if you fortify a tank location with bio against a mech, it is not going to be the, gr the greatest thing for you to do because you are never going to win an air fight against a mech because, again, you're making medevacs off of less... You should, you should have less starports than mech does because you want to prioritize so much of your bio supply. So mech is going to have a viking lead over you. Mech is going to have a tank lead over you. You're gonna your lead is going to be over marine marauder. But if you're forcing yourself in these, like, uh, these, like split concave out spots with tank versus tank... All that's going to happen is he's going to repeatedly push your air back with, with Viking. And then he's going to be able to then ro rotate his tanks forward and siege into your tanks. Because a tank can shoot farther than it can see. So the only way you can combat this is by scanning, 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 scanning. Because the Vikings give him vision and you can't contest that. You're like, okay, well, his fucking Vikings are here. I got to back up and then he can move his tanks forward and I can't see it. So I, I'm just scanning repeatedly. And if you keep scanning and, he, and then let's just say you scan, he doesn't move. 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 You don't scan for the next 10 seconds because you're out of energy and he moves and suddenly your tanks are getting shot and you're fog of war, yet he sees you. Right. So it it, it puts you in this like, and again, it, it, like, so it, you're never going to win a fight against mech because of that reason. And then it puts you into the position where you're not actually being able to use mobility anymore. 
you fortify locations, which is, it removes mobility. The whole point about bio against mech is you want to force tanks. Like, let's say he's got 20 tanks and he's got five bases. You want to be like, I'm going to poke your fifth base. Okay. He brought over 12 tanks and sieged there. Now I'm going to go poke his third base. And, you know, you, you just pull tanks around constantly and you thin them out. I, I don't know if you're getting a phone call right now, but if you have to take it, you got to take it. It's okay. Um, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, so it, in the end, you just have, if you're bio, did you just have to be committed to base trading? Like, you know, if, if he's pushing at my third or fourth, I got to go, I'm, I got to fly in and. It's not necessarily base trading. On the other. It's, it's about forcing him to be in a bad spot and you have mobility over him. So it's it's like imagine like a dude who's like like think about it like a, a fight I'll give you an analogy you got a guy who's really fast and he's like not that strong but he's super fucking fast and you got a guy who's really fucking strong but he's slow as shit and the guy who's really really fast he's not gonna keep like kicking the guy who's slow in the head over and over when the guy who's slow has his arms up and he keeps like hitting his arm 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 hitting his arm. The guy who's like really fast could like kick the guy in the head that's really slow, but then immediately with his other leg, kick him in the fucking like ribs or some shit on the other side. And that's what bio is. Bio like forces over commitments to one side and then it completely rotates and goes to the other side and it completely rotates and goes to the other side and completely rotates and goes to the other side. And you keep forcing mech to pull all over the place and you always scan ahead before you take a fight. So you look at it and you go, okay, 12 tanks sieged. No, fuck that shit that we're going to die. Or you go, okay, uh, he's got tanks like coming over here still. He's not actually in position for this right away because I'm faster and he didn't predict I was going to go here before I did it. So now I have an opening where there's only four tanks and I have 80 supply of bio here so I can run that shit over. And then if you ever make it one time where this happens, you just suddenly start running away with the game, running away with the game, running away with the game. And again, the whole time you're doing this, you're constantly keeping him turtly as fuck because you're making him run around his base to defend it nonstop while you're just expanding. So you, even if you have to take a trade every once in a while, where you're like, okay, I'm going to run into eight tanks right now. This is, this is not going to be the best. I'm going to lose like 80 supply. He's only going to lose 30 because this is not going to be a great trade. I have a, I have six bases and he's on three. So I can replace what I just lost really fast and I can restart the process again. And the more bases the Terran gets that's going mech, the harder it is to defend properly like this because he has to travel more terrain to get there. So you force def you force yeah, defense okay. and you just go around it. Hopefully that makes sense. But that's how you play. Yeah, Kyle, yeah, no, it, it's actually really helpful. Um, do you play poker by any chance? I have, but no, not really. I know. Uh, or what, what were you gonna say about that? I was just curious. Okay. Um, sometimes the way you speak makes me think that. Um, yeah, you might be a poker player. <laughs> I, I was told to be a poker player a long time ago. Like, people recommended me to do it, and I did it for a little bit, but because there's a lot of similarities of how you break RTS down to, like, you can, like, analyze, like, your thought process of, like, people you're playing against. But, yeah, I've never, I don't really play poker a lot, though. Okay. Yeah, just curious. Um, okay. Um, well, shoot, I, I know we're getting short on time here. Um, if you want to just like watch the next 30 seconds and see me get destroyed, I, I sure. this is like real eye opener for me because I was like, what up, like 40 supply, and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm going to win this game, and then like I just lose instantly. Sure. Um, <laughs> All right, let's see what happens. I haven't even looked. I Maybe it's even obvious to me. Uh. <laughs> okay. No, you're, you're honestly like you're gonna. Looks like you're gonna win this fight. Uh, the one one problem though that's happening here is you did not restem your bio, so stim pack has okay. like, obviously has duration. Uh, one stim is not gonna cut it for longer fights, and your stim's been off for like the last four seconds, which mm -hmm. is definitely gonna hurt you in the long run because it's so much attack speed you're sacrificing. It's like you have double attack speed when you stim pack. Okay. And then also mobility too, like those Colossus are actually kiting you because of stim. If you if you would have stimmed a second time, you would have won that fight. Okay, interesting. Because um, it was close as shit, God. but yeah, like second stim guaranteed that fight wins for you. And you're, even though you lost that fight, you're still ahead. Uh, and now your medevac, if you're a medevac server like this, where, uh, like, because I could have I could have said so many more things to you too. Like I could be like, you could be microing this so much more, you could not clump against the Colossus. You could do. You, you could have kited forward against the zealots and, or like the first units he had, and go back to your tanks and like thin them out while his like his units don't get a lot of shots on you because you're kiting backwards. Because again, you have mobility because bio is faster. 
you could kite him back into the tanks, which would buy the tanks more time to shoot. Because the bio was also getting healed by medevacs. There's a lot of things that we could have said that could have changed that fight a bit more. But literally, all the all, the biggest, most important one is, if you just stim back twice and just A-moved it, you would have won. For sure. Okay. If, if you line up... If you lined up a, a line of Marines perpendicular to the um, Colossus's laser beam, like would it just wipe out the Marines one at a time? Like, like scan, scan across, kill one, scan across, kill the next one, or, or is, does the area of effect? Um, so, is the area of effect laser beam, or is it different? It's, uh, it's off the graphic. Whatever, like the the way a Colossus is going to shoot is whatever it shoots, it's going to make a. Uh, uh, just a straight line that goes left and right from the target it shoots every time, no matter what angle it's facing. It like, if you put both your hands out to like you know, the hand hand to shoulder straight out, and you just turn your whole torso, that's how a Colossus literally shoots every fucking time, and it goes to hand to hand like a straight line just like that. So if you if you can ever have a marine that's getting attacked directly in the center of the Colossus's attack, move out of a line where there's no other bio on the left or right of it. That is ideal micro against a Colossus, which is how I was telling you to do like Marauders earlier in the coaching lesson. I was like, if you have one Marauder getting shot by a Colossus and you move it forward away from your bio, that, Coloss th that Colossus will do all of its damage in a straight line against that Marauder. The line will never change to like, like do diagonals or like a straight line forward out of the Colossus. It'll always have that left to right line out of the unit of hits. So it'll, you can mitigate damage that, that way if you just spread your units out like one forward, one go forward, one go forward. That's getting hit by the Colossus, but realistically, again, that's that's micro that can work against small amounts of a Colossus, like one or two, in smaller armies. But if you have like a lot, that micro kind of becomes irrelevant. You're not going to micro. No one's going to micro like that. It's it comes then it comes down more to like pre-fight positioning and setup than just initial like bio micro engage of just pulling a marine or here and there. Another thing too that you uh, that you should know, which is what you're already doing this game, which I like. Is if you if you know you're up against Colossus, you should go more Marauder heavy, and you are so that's good. If you like, like I'm glad you don't have like one or two tech labs and like eight reactors, basically, uh, because a, a, uh, an army where you have like like 40% Marauder or like 30% Marauder, like you could even have maybe a little bit more Marauder than you do now, but it's still you have double digit Marauders, which is nice. You have at least 10. Uh, having a lot of Marauder makes it you just fucking aim of Colossus and they just die. Like you could even get cleaved on the Colossus on the. The Colossus could be cleaving the Marauder, and you'd still be okay. Because you, because Marauders just eat that shit to the face, and no, don't give a don't give a shit. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. Um. Well, l let me just say before we before we wrap up that um, yeah, like I I really really appreciate like uh all the content that you're making. It's like super helpful, and it's like unbelievably it's unbelievable how entertaining it is. Like I swear to God, I'd rather watch that stuff than. Than the new Star Wars, and I can't even figure out why. So it's like you really uh, you, tap, tapped into something, and uh, my job's really similar to yours. And I, I find myself stealing a lot of your, um, your your approach to teaching. I've been uh, borrowing, and it's uh, it, it's been really effective. Nice, and, uh, dude. That's awesome. So, um, yeah, thanks for that. Yeah, thank you. And um, huge, huge thank you. Um, yeah, I gotta go pick up my son from school. All right. Um, if, I could, if I could leave you with one thing before uh, we we part ways here uh, about how you can improve, uh, like you know, your like what you were asking for earlier with the efficiency, it would just be like touching back really fast on what I kind of hit on earlier, which is the whole uh, like minute to minute comparisons. So if you say I want to go bio, and let's just say you look at my series and you go, I'm gonna download Vibes Diamond Replay Pack, and if you didn't know that. I have replay packs on my Discord in a bronze to GM replay pack section where it's all broken down by league and it's also broken down by game number. So if you go, oh, like, like in the middle of the, in, in like the middle of his Diamond 2 video, I really like this bio game or whatever. And you're like, I'm going to get that one. And you, you can you can find it fairly easy. You'll It's very simple to find out which one you're looking for. You break that game down minute by minute by minute by minute. And you just literally compare worker count to supply count. And you then try to replicate that in your own games. That will increase how fast you get, or how, how much better you can get, how, and how fast that can be. Just so much compared to just doing it on your own, just trying to like create shit out of your own mind to be like, okay, well, I saw this, so I'll try and do something similar. Because you have no reference of time. You have no reference of, uh, of number, basically, when you do it that way. But giving yourself that replay thing we talked about, uh, that gives you a reference to base it off of, which actually gives you so much more tools to actually break it down and improve on really fast. 
Okay. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. That sounds super helpful. All right. Sick, man. Well, I don't want to hold you up for too long. I know you got to go, but if you have anything else you want to ask, by all means, otherwise, thank you very much for doing the coaching lesson, dude. No, thank you. I appreciate it. And, um, yeah, if, um, yeah, I'd love to do it again in the future. So, sure. Um, sounds good. Yeah. Again, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And, um, yeah, hang in there with the Terran, man. We're all, um, <laughs> yeah, I will. It, no worries. Super, yeah, as much pain as you're going through, it's it's so helpful to watch. Like, I don't know if you can. You know. uh, we're, we're going. Well, yeah, I'm still I'm still it. gonna go. To, I'm gonna really try to get the GM. I'm not gonna give up on it. Oh yeah, I'm sure you will. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, again, um, have a good one, man. All right, yeah, and I'll I'll be sending you this vod in Discord, the same Discord we're talking to now. Uh, I'll send you the the video link to the video so you can watch it again and recap and stuff like that. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you, man. Have a good day. Yeah, you too. All right. Later, dude. Bye-bye. All right, guys. So uh, really quickly, um, I can just you know finish off this game really fast as well. Since he, I know he's already gone, but he can watch this later. Uh, but again, yo, thank you very much, Mr. Turdstorm, for doing a coaching lesson. Um, oof. Oof. <laughs> See, this is kind of what I was talking about, though, with the... Uh, uh, like, Marauders are good against Colossus, right? Uh, there might not be enough Marauder in this exact fight. Also, I would say there might not be enough Viking in this fight. Also, if this fight were to be broken down in any way, uh, ideally, it would actually be splitting the bio up a bit more. And I would say this fight looks like it's going to really decide the game. And here's why, okay? Right now, if we look at the... Uh, so this fight is fucking awful, right? They're like, oh god, everything's dead, and there's not enough production. Like, here's here's the thing. Okay, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I don't want to confuse anybody. That fight sucked. Uh, nothing against Turd Storm or Perdition. Um, that you know, I, every Terran goes through this. This is a uh, growing pains of Terran. <laughs> this is why every Terran gets mad. But there's not enough production here for the current economy we're working with there is one two three four five six bases obviously the sixth base is not done yet but it's on its way there are 69 scvs i bet he stopped there on purpose but uh there's a big bank to be worked with right now and we are not going to be able to spin this bank before the protoss pushes across the map and kills us so my point i'm trying to make here is is if you're going to go for a big fight where you're expecting to lose your bio and you have a bank to work with you need to spend some of that bank to be able to remax faster. That is the lot. That is the concept of harassment-based builds. And the fact of the matter is, bio always falls under the harassment category of build order uh, styles. You can never, ever, ever say bio is going to be a death ball. And if you're in an in-game scenario where you're both maxed out supply, and you're you're going to take an army a fight versus his army, that is a and he's got a death ball, and you have a harassment-based army. You 100% should be expecting to lose your army and rebuild it and lose it and rebuild it and lose it and rebuild it because the whole concept is is you can make barracks all fucking day and you could have like 20 barracks right now and you could easily replace what you just lost in a matter of 40 seconds. He, however, cannot... If you killed... Like, let's say you actually at some point they'll kill all of his Colossus. He cannot replace six Colossus in like 40 seconds. Even if he has two Robos or three Robos and he Chrono Boosts it. It's going to take him a little bit longer to replace what you lose than what he loses. Same thing can be said about Archons. Not only because of uh, production, but because these units are so fucking expensive on gas. And right now, at most, he could only... Re if he were to spend only all of his gas on Colossus, he could make... He could make six Colossus again, but he could make zero Archons. If he were to make Archons instead of Colossus, he could replace four Archons, and that's it. And all of his gas is spent. And then he could make he could not make the other uh, the other two archons or any of these six colossus or any of these stalkers, like death balls. Not only are time restrictions of rebuilding them and replacing them, but they are also heavily fucking gas restrictions. Death ball and gas are like hand in hand. They're they're two peas in a pod. They fucking they're they're they you know that is what makes a death ball a death ball is it is gas expensive. It is tech expensive. Bio is not gas or tech expensive. Half of your bio army is literally just pure minerals because it's marines. So you should be expecting to lose your army and re and replacing your army fast. And you should also try to avoid fighting death ball straight up before you can do things like, for instance, 
if you're just going Marine Marauder Medivac, it would be a much better idea to do something like go, okay, he's over here. Maybe you send like one Marine down here and one Marine over here and one Marine over here before the fight starts. And you go, uh, nothing here. My Marine is shooting a pylon. Nothing here. My Marine is shooting a shield battery. And my Marine over here just got wiped out by fucking Colossus. And there's like eight Stalkers there and Archons. And you just saw his army. And just to confirm it, you go, my Marine died there. Maybe you don't see it, but you scan it because it just died. You scan and see this. So you stim pack over here with your big part of your army and you avoid fighting him as much as possible, but you go over here and you wipe out a base. You then stim pack into his main and you wipe out some of his buildings. Your whole army gets caught in his main base. He fights you. So instead of fighting here, you get fucking destroyed in his main base and you kill a lot of his, you kill like maybe one fourth of his army or one third of his army and you lose everything in his main base because you're, otherwise he would have lost more buildings. So he, he had to come back here and defend it anyways. And then as he comes across the map, you have enough barracks to remax a big part of your supply. So as you, and he's also being able to, he's able to remax slower than he was before because you just killed off maybe like 15, 20 probes and a nexus and also a few of his gateways or something. So he, his remax potential has gone down a little bit. Yours is still where it was already because, you know, he, you're attacking him. And that's, the, again, the whole point of bio is to just remax, 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 lose a fight, remax, lose a fight. You do this like three times though, where you remax as a fight, remax as a fight, remax as a fight, but indirectly you're fucking him up over and over. You're killing base here, you're killing a base over here, you're killing some of his army, you're killing some production. He can't, he can, his his supply will continuously get dri dipped, dipped a little bit, dipped a little bit, dipped, and he will also run out of money eventually because you're crippling his economy, and then suddenly it's like, well, now I have a maxed out bio army, and he only has like 120 supply. And at this point, I can just stim pack forward and just run him over. That's kind of how bio works, which is why bio is hard. Uh, that's why I didn't really teach people bio early on. It is not easy to execute. It, it requires map manipulation, which is an advanced fucking like maneuver. It's advanced uh, strategies over just macro and a move. <laughs> Make Thors and Hellbats and fucking a move, guys. So it's a, it's a little bit more of a complex thought process, but it is something that you have to do, if though. Because, if, again, you have to understand there are two types of armies. There are the harassment-based armies and there are deathball-based armies. And harassment-based armies will never beat deathball-based armies in a straight-up encounter like this. Because, you're because again, if you here's, here's the best way to describe this. You're both maxed out. A harassment-based army, and then, like, let's, let me start that over. It's going to be easier to explain it like this. I want you guys to imagine a number with like a pile of gold next to it, okay? Or some shit like, just close your eyes and think about this. Imagine a number and you have like a sack of, like a, a, a bank or like a, like a pile of cash or gold bars or some shit. And it's like a 200, a 200 fucking bio army is worth like 10 fucking gold bars, all right? 10 gold bars. And then you have a Protoss death ball of Archon, Colossus, Stalker, Templar, that army is also 200 supply. So they're both 200 supply, but you got 10 gold bars for the bio and this Protoss death ball is worth like fucking 25 gold bars because it's way more fucking expensive to make that, that, that army per supply is more expensive. An Archon? An Archon is four supply. An Archon cost, costs 100 minerals and 400, or sorry, 100 minerals and 300 gas, which is 400 resources in total. Four Marines is four supply and it costs 200 minerals which is 200 resources so four marines and an archon are the same supply but yet the marines are half the fucking cost and an archon versus four marines unless the, the marines are microed like a fucking god that archon is just gonna be like pff, dead pff, dead pff, dead he's just gonna kill all the marines with no problem so death ball is armies that even though they say the same supply, they are worth way more, which means that they, they cost way more. They are harder to replace, but they fuck, they, they, they fuck. <laughs> if you fight an army where your resource value is 10,000 and his is 18,000, he's going to fuck <laughs> and you're going to die. And, uh, yeah, you know, that's kind of how it goes. <laughs> and then you can see, you know, like, there's just not enough time. There's not enough time to replace what died. So, Terran's dead.
All right. Anyways, uh, yeah. And again, like we talked about earlier in the coaching lesson, where we like it was like something as simple as if the bio would have stim packed here, there was no fourth at that point, and there was a fully there was only one Colossus that won the, the end of the fight there. Had the stim pack the bio actually won that fight because they stimmed again a second time properly. The third would have died. The probes would have died. The Protoss would have been way more starved on money. Would not have been able to do something as easy as like take a fourth base then. He would have and then been instead trying to replace probes and replace a third base. Terran would have probably won this game because that is it creates setup for the future. The setup would be the Protoss is basically screwed over versus the Protoss. Because uh, the worst the worst case scenario is, is I'm going to explain this last situation and then we'll be done with the coaching lesson. And again, I'm going to send this VOD to him, so I'm trying to just wrap it up because we didn't really talk about the game at all. Um, worst case scenario, you are going for harassment-based playstyles, which is like Bio, for instance. Your opponent is going for tech-based death ball style, which is like teching into Colossus, teching into Templar, Archon, teching into high-tech units, which are expensive. And you show up to the guy's base who's teching with a harass style, and you both lose your armies, but he doesn't lose any economy. So you don't punish him at all for teching. That is a bad position to be in for the harass style. Because harass style needs to break economy of tech style. That's how that works. Harass style always has to break economy. I'm not saying harass style is all in. But it's like, if all in had an older brother, it's called harassment. Like harass style builds. Like all in is like you have no future of the game. If, if you fail the attack, you're, you lose the game. That's it. But if you play a harassment-based style and your opponent is teching, you eventually do turn into an all-in if you don't break his economy because you have no way to deal with what he has. You have to break his economy. Like, if you if you take a fight against his army, that is what he wants, and that's where your death happens. You have to break economy, no matter what. Uh, but yeah, hopefully that makes sense for everybody listening. But again, this was a coaching lesson, guys, So and uh, my, my student had to go uh, at, just before this ended. But thank you again. Shout out to Turdstorm for the... Um, for the coaching lesson and uh this was a bit of a different coaching lesson we did a lot of like uh perspectives of about starcraft and other things other than just breaking a replay down we still kind of wrapped up a replay on the end here but it was a different coaching lesson it was good but turns from thank you man i hope you enjoyed it uh thank you everyone who, for watching and if you guys enjoyed this uh i do have a lot more coaching lessons on my youtube channel it's it's turd storm like like a poop storm turd not turret i can say turret storm <laughs> it's, i'm not mispronouncing <laughs> but uh yeah uh shout out to the to my boy mr shitstorm <laughs> uh and thank you guys go check out my youtube channel if you want to watch more coaching lessons like this uh, i have a coaching sec section on my youtube channel and i'll see you guys in the next one until then peace bye guys <laughs>